Welcome to Tech Boda Blog. This is episode number 26. This week I'm going to be describing how you select a good flash that will work with the camera axe for high speed photography. Last week I described how the shutter has a lot of lag and a long duration and hence isn't useful for uh, a lot of high speed photography and instead you want to use a flash. So if you haven't watched that article and you're not exactly sure why you can't just directly take a picture of a, a lot of high-speed photography like a bullet or something in, in mid-flight, uh, you should definitely watch that episode. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Uh, but for those of you who have that understanding, you know that you want to use a flash in a dark room for most high-speed photography. And um, this week I'm going to be showing you sort of what's important when selecting a flash for this application. First off, I'll describe, you know, your standard flashes that are probably the most common in photography today. Uh, a lot of people have something like this, which is a, a Canon 580EX2. Canon makes a 430, which is also a good, good flash for high-speed photography. Uh, Nikon makes equivalents called, I think, the SB900 and um, some other flashes in their line. These are really great flashes for high-speed photography. Pretty much the best uh, flashes you can get that are non-exotic. Um, and I'll sort of get into sort of crazy flashes at the end of this uh, episode. But uh, for standard people who just want to start off with high-speed photography, um, these are good flashes. The problem is that they're expensive. So I've done some experimenting with various flashes. And this is a Yongnu uh, YN460. And I found that this is a good flash for high-speed photography as well. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones. You can you know, search Amazon and probably find a, a slew of other flashes. But there are some things you want to look for that both of these flashes have that make them you know, pretty good for high-speed photography. So here we have the Canon flash. And what makes this flash and this flash really top-notch for high-speed photography is that they have manual modes where you can adjust the uh, flash intensity. So with the Canon, you can adjust it from uh, 1 128th all the way to um, 1 to 1 power, which basically means full power. And usually when you're doing uh, high-speed photography, you're going to leave it uh, around the minimum power because that'll have the shortest duration. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can bump this up for things that aren't as fast, like water droplets if you want a little more light. But uh, I tend to leave it as uh, low as I can keep it and still get the exposure in my camera. And I might have to bump up the ISO or something on the camera. Basically, I want to leave it at low power so that it can uh, keep a short duration. And the same with this young new flash you don't have as many power options but um, that would be full power and this is minimum power and you've got uh, the manual power mode selected right there so it kind of works the same you leave it at the minimum power most of the time so that you can get the shortest flash duration on the other end of the spectrum you might run into uh, something like this old Vivitar uh, 283 flash this is a very common flash there's lots of uh, web pages about how to hack it and things, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but this has a sensor in it that detects how much light came back. This is sort of the precursor to uh, modern flashes, which have TTL or through the lens light reading. Uh, this would sort of detect the amount of light being reflected back, and it would use that to determine how long to leave the flash on, so it didn't have to talk with the camera directly. This type of flash doesn't work too well with the camera axe because there's no way to manually set the flash. It's all about reflected light. It, it just won't uh, expose the scene correctly in a dark room most of the time. Now there is a hack you can do uh, that some we've been discussing a bit on our, my forums, but if you put something like this, like some tin foil here that sort of um, covers up the lower portion of the, the flash and reflects the light back at this thyristor, then it will uh, 
tell the flash that there's a lot of light and turn the flash off basically as quick as it can. And that's sort of a really easy way to hack these super cheap flashes sometimes so that they'll work pretty well with the camera. Another way is to actually open them up and uh, start replace, uh, replacing parts of the internal so that you can manually control it or so that you just have the flash always do its shortest duration. Now I do want to give you a word of caution. Some flashes, and actually this old Vivitar is one of them, uh, have uh, high trigger voltages and uh, that will damage the camera axe. So this is a flash you do not want to use with the camera axe. Uh, if it does happen that you accidentally plug in one of these to the camera axe, there's just a, a single little 50 cent chip that you can replace uh, to fix the problem, but it's best to avoid that. And um, I'll put a, a link in the show notes to a page that lists a lot of flashes and you can figure out if they're safe or not uh, for the camera axe on that page. And basically you need something that uh, has under a 30 volt trigger voltage. Um, I'll also put a link in the show notes to a, a video I did about how you can actually measure the trigger voltage uh, for flashes. So uh, there are other flashes though that have a similar mechanism uh, that detects the light directly and on those that tinfoil idea may, you know, help out and you might be able to use some of the flashes that you already have. One last thing I wanted to mention is that uh, there's some studio flashes out there, right? Those are the big uh, powerful flashes that people put in their studio, oftentimes plugged directly into the wall. Uh, from what I've read and I've never used one, those are oftentimes not as good for high-speed photography and uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one I'll mention here today is that uh, sometimes they'll have really complicated circuitry in them to uh, actually lengthen the flash duration so that they can better control the, the color of light coming out of the flash so that they can have a very calibrated uh, color temperature on the flash. And uh, that's just something that these speed light flashes don't worry about. However, um, while that's desirable for a lot of uh, studio photography, that is not desirable for high speed photography. On high speed photography, you want the flash duration to be as short as possible. So if you're going to try a studio flash uh, and you're buying one, try to figure out the flash duration. If, if it's, you know, one twenty thousandth of a second or faster, then it's going to be pretty good. And uh, if you've already got one, you know, you can read the documentation and see how, how uh, short the shortest duration is or you can, uh, you know, just try it out and uh, see, see if it works well for you. So now let me just summarize what we've learned today. Uh, typically with high-speed photography, you're using a flash in a dark room to light the scene. The shutter on your camera is going to just be open uh, for a long duration, usually with bulb mode for multiple seconds. And the flash is what will light the scene. The uh, best type of flash for high-speed photography is one with manual settings because then you can set it to its lowest power setting which will be its shortest, shortest duration and flash duration is the most important thing for high-speed photography oftentimes. You will uh, want to try to find a flash that has a duration of about one twenty thousandth of a second or shorter see a really good deal or already have some flashes that might have a light sensor in the front of them, it might be possible to attach some kind of an apparatus to reflect light back into that sensor or, or even hack the flash so that uh, it always does the uh, shortest duration flash. And uh, one thing to watch out for is the uh, trigger voltage on flashes. If it's too high it'll could damage your camera or your camera axe. You, for the camera axe you want to stay with flashes that have a trigger voltage under 30 volts and uh, I'll link to a page in the show notes that tells you the uh, different trigger voltages for a bunch of different flashes. Last but not least I wanted to give a quick glimpse at the uh, air gap flash that I've made. Uh, so these are much faster than your standard modern flash which are xenon flash tubes inside of them and that's because xenon tends to glow whereas this air gap uh, flash is filled with just air and it does not glow so it has a really short duration 
which is great for high-speed photography. The problem is that building these is very expensive and very dangerous and, and uh, buying one is uh, even more expensive. So uh, most people don't have these kinds of flashes. If you're really curious, you know, just type uh, air gap flash into your uh, search engine and you'll be able to read more about them. Otherwise, I do plan to do a, a future episode about these uh, on the uh, Tech Photo blog. So uh, keep on watching.